and welcome back. So this is part one in a three-part series on Christopher Watts and the interview. The This part, I'm going to play the audio in and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you my opinion of what we learned from the actual audio um, and any discrepancies that there may be with the actual evidence. And then in part two is going to be a live stream um, later on tonight, um, probably four o'clock, maybe five, somewhere in there. Oh boy, wasn't wasn't that hard to listen to? You know, he 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 comes off and he sounds like just an average uh, working middle class American. You know, he talks about his uh, his stress. Um, his anxiety um, and that he never really dealt with it that he just kept on bottling it up inside and he talks about his uh, desire to um, you know, wish that something would have sent him off in a different court you know path you know this is this is his way of uh, trying to make sense of it in his head maybe but you know it could also be something that he read through the uh, law library because um, he has had access to the law library and he's had access to speaking with other inmates and he could have learned this you know it's like hey this is how you defer you know the you know the blame from yourself say something like this I, I don't believe a lot of what he had to say in the uh, first part of the conversation I, I will say that I'm, I'm surprised it, it, it doesn't sound like the um, from what the you, we just listened to doesn't sound like it was edited all that much and you know uh, Graham and Tammy I mean they they obviously they, you know they, they kudos to them for keeping him talking because you know Chris could have easily bottled up inside you know and closed up and you know and then we never would have learned you know what we did um, some of the evidence uh, you know certainly does not meet or match uh, the actual statements that he is saying I'm going to have to uh, look into those to investigate them further. Um, the part of uh, um, where he said that he, you know, how he smothered uh, the two girls doesn't match evidence. The evidence doesn't support that. And I'm, I'm that's all as far as I'm going to get into on that. But he, he, you know, his statement, what was said on the Dr. Phil show, does not support it's not supported by the actual evidence itself he could have used something else and done and still done it in the same place in the same location in the same way but it doesn't support it, you know evidence wise doesn't support it and that's all i'm saying on that um he he definitely tried to uh, uh, uh change the course you know in um uh, in the eyes of uh, Graham and Tammy, the two detectives, he wanted to sound um, less involved. Um, found it kind of kind of uh, interesting that you know that he's got this one lady that has been writing him four times a day, every day since he's been there. Everybody's got to have a super fan, right? I wonder if she's one of the ones that sent him uh, photographs and you know semi-nude photographs and, and uh, um, sent him uh, money because uh, there's one that one super fan that has done that and also sent pictures of her uh, of her minor children so um, yeah we, we did learn that uh, um, also that the the version of uh, what uh, Trent the supposed gay lover said still doesn't match up with the uh, Christopher, what you know, Christopher Watts says he wouldn't know who he was if he walked into the room, and this is supported by what the Frederick Police Department know. They interviewed him, and they know that uh, it's it's you know it's all a lie. It never happened. You know, it, my tip off to it was you know that it wasn't true. It was because the profile for this website that he said that he um, met Chris on. The profile wasn't made until the day after he was actually arrested. So, and it's kind of hard to meet somebody on a website where it doesn't have a profile and it wasn't set up until the day afterwards. 
But, you know, um, and the other things that were kind of uh, interesting about the Trent statement that he gave the Inside Edition was the dates that he said that he met Chris um, for their, you know, sexual encounters. Um, one of those dates was when Chris was in North Carolina with the family when they were back there on their six weeks uh, uh, vacation. God only, I wish they would have stayed there. I wish I never would have had to have reported on this guy. But overall, you know, uh, he sounded like a just an average uh, guy, and, he, and everything about him was, uh, he said it very matter-of-factly, as if, it, you know, he was reading um, a script you know, off in his mind, and this may be, you know, um, a way for him to cope with it, and coming to real, you know, terms with the reality of that what he has done, and knowing that he's going to spend the rest of his life, you know, in a five by seven, you know, um, cell for the rest of his life, you know, staring at the same concrete walls. Um, on a uh, side note, though. Um, I have uh, uh, received information that uh, Christopher Watts' uh, um, cellmate may be uh, actually moving on. He, uh, this is beside the point, but uh, he, uh, he may be moving on to Connecticut because uh, he is uh, um, due to uh, stand uh, uh, charges in Connecticut. If so, then Chris would be all alone. Nobody at night to uh, uh, read him a bedtime story and to tuck him in at night. Poor Chris, all alone. So, yeah, I'm, I'm checking on that now, though. But uh, I did see the um, the cellmate's name come across on um, a extradition, I guess. Um, I wouldn't call it an indictment, but I don't know what you'd actually call it. I mean, somebody like you know Scott Reese or whatever would know exactly what this what this means, though. So transport t transporting notice I, I don't know I, I, I'm guessing that, that what it would actually be called but you know they got into to laugh relax uh -huh. and this is a this is a, a tactic to keep him talking to keep him engaged in the conversation um, and yeah, uh, he tried to um, uh, you know, do some misinformation and uh, misdirection as uh, Graham and Tammy were asking him questions. I mean, I'd love to hear you know the you know what the the actual detectives but um, have to uh, say about this after meeting with him. You know, what was their take on what he he had to say? Did they believe everything that he had to say? You know, did they think he was telling the truth? And. I, you know, I questioned the, the part about uh, how he uh, he choked and killed uh, Shannon and uh, their um, alleged uh, sexual encounter. Did she redress herself after afterwards? And then, so she put on um, uh, uh, the underwear thong, and then um, then she put her bra back on, and then put a t-shirt on to go to bed. And then he got on top of her, held her down. But he said he wasn't, he didn't hold down her arms, but she did, she just laid there and she let him, you know, choke her to death. <coughs> Is that really, does anybody, is anybody supposed to believe that that's exactly how it happened, that she didn't put up a fight? I don't, I don't buy that for a minute. That that's how he, he attacked her and choked her out. Nor do I believe the, you know, the, his version of taking the two girls to the, um, the you know, work and then suffocating them one at a time and then um, carrying them up to the top of the tanks and then stuffing them into the tanks. I don't, I don't buy his version and the science you know, behind it from what I know and that's what I'm checking on doesn't support that either. But I could be wrong. Maybe there's more evidence out there that actually proves his way more than what uh, I originally uh, read. Um, let's see what else was there. I'm surprised that uh, also, but the, um, the the of the of the two parts of the, of the entire um, audio that uh, we just listened to, the parts that I'm most curious about was 
what did they edit out at the end there? There is obviously one or two parts there at the end where you could you could tell that it was an audited, edited um, part. What did they edit out? Was it um, information about Nicole? I mean, he says that he loved her. That was uh, not really a surprise. He said, well, it, it, his quote was, I believed it to be true, end quote. So, and he says he hasn't been in contact with her unless she's writing to him underneath an alias. And I think the reason why he, he, he pointed that out and then chuckled is because if she is writing him underneath an alias, maybe he's lying to these ladies um, that, who were writing him on, you know, and he's hoping that she's not one of them, so he's not lying to her. But uh, they, he said their relationship started off as uh, friends, and uh, first, uh, you know, they they uh, start off as friends, and they went to the park, just like I said before. But then they, uh, you know, their sexual encounter, and I, I don't believe the the entire thing about the um, his. Uh, Sex with uh, Shannon and sex with uh, Nicole. I, I mean, there's no way to prove that. It's his version of the story. Now, this is the second version of the entire you know, events, you know, for pretty much. But uh, is this the truth? Is there more truth than this, or is it, you know, some of the truth and you know, and most of it a uh, fabrication? Um, in the end of the day. At the end of it here, I'm going to go with that I think we got right about maybe 50% truth, 50% lie. Um, and there's a lot of parts there that I believe uh, he is downplaying and he's, um, he's covering for Nicole and he doesn't want people to bother her and he wishes her well. And you know, he said he wants to. He wants to be in contact with her. At least uh, he said. Well, Graham uh, put it in his head that uh, you, oh, you just want to keep in contact with her for closure, right? And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, uh, closure. No, he wants. To, he wants to still be um, with uh, Nicole. So, end of the day. End of the interview. He killed his entire family. At least now, he admits to doing that. He admits to killing Shannon and killing the girls and not uh, trying to uh, dirty her name anymore. And he still loves his mistress. And... He, I, I know he... Um, is remorseful to a point. I think he's. I think there's. Uh, when it comes to his remorsefulness, I think it's more that he is remorseful. He got caught, and then he's remorseful at the fact that you know he annihilated his entire family. And and the the part in the beginning there where he said that he was just like an autom automotive, you know, auto, like a machine. He was just going forward. You know, and he couldn't uh, veer off. The, the course was going to happen, and he needed to do this. You know, it was just something that came in his mind, and he had to do it. And that he acted without thinking. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a minute. Because if he was on on that, why did it take him 43 minutes? That's his normal drive commute time to to work, but. 43 minutes, he put his dead wife in the truck, put his two girls in the truck, and then drove 43 minutes all the way to work. He could have just buried his wife out in the desert and said she took off with another man. Made up a whole other story. And they would have searched for her for a while, and you know he could have been the single father and raising his two girls and had his little um, hottie totty, you know, um, Nicole on the side, you know, um, for rendezvous, and all her, all of uh, Shannon's friends would have come and loved him and supported him until they found her. He could have went that way. I'm just putting it out as a hypothetical. He could have done it. He could have done that, but he drove 43 minutes one way there, stopped the truck to open the gate, 
then drove into the actual um, containment area, dumped Shanann, and then he, we're supposed to believe that he then took out Cece, suffocated her, let's just say that took four minutes, and then he then came back and Bella's last words were her begging for her life, don't do what you did to my sister, to me. And that is supposed to be what we are, we're led to believe is the truth. And then he took four minutes to do that. Then he carried both girls up two flights of industrial stairs to the top of the tank, stuffed them into a, into the tanks, you know, and heard their their bodies fall, free fall from two stories up onto the you know the top of the oil like tar mixture is in those tanks. Then reclosed the the thief hatch on the top of the, the tanks and then walked down the stairs and then walked back over to the truck backed over to where Shannon's body was dug a grave put her in it threw the dirt back on her and then drove home like you know, well within his co-worker showed up but you know then he acted all natural and then um, afterwards uh, finished out the rest of his day of work and then went home as na as normal. We're supposed to believe that that is what he, you know, he that's the story he wants us to believe. I don't buy it. Don't buy it at all. If he had any remorse for what he did, yeah, maybe he killed Shannon in the heat of passion. But you're almost, you're over an hour by the time you go to take Bella's life. Because you take 45 minutes, 3 minutes, and you're at 48 minutes. Now you have to uh, suffocate one child. Now you're at 52 minutes. Now you're right at almost an hour when you, when you go to go take, you know, your other daughter's life. And if he really was worried about the fact that Bella saw what he was doing, why didn't he he do Bella first before Cece. This is why I have such a hard time doing this case because I have to think about in my head. I have to think about those two little girls. I picture them in my head and what it looks like from his eyes down at those two little girls when he put his hands around them in harm. And he did it, not once, but he did it twice. Then, as if they were nothing at all to him, and he didn't, he never cared for them for a moment in his life, he discarded them in such a crude, awful way by shoving them and stomping on them through a thief hatch on the top of those tanks. Yeah, who am I, right? I don't. I don't have any facts to back up my, uh, you know, my theory. So therefore, I must be completely wrong. So go ahead and roast me in the comment section. I will see you uh, later on today for part two, and part two will be a live stream. And uh, I hope that uh, you know you're able to stop by. But uh, don't you know, forget uh, Saturday um, and Sunday this weekend. I'm doing a live stream both days. One of those two days, I will have a special guest with me. So there'll be two of us on the live stream. So, all right, later on today, um, I think probably about four, maybe 4.30, I'll do the live stream um, for part two of this. And uh, we'll um, answer questions uh, based on uh, what we learned. Hopefully, uh, you know, between now and then, you guys can come up with uh, some questions to ask. And I will only be able to answer, obviously, what um, I can factually support. So thanks again for stopping by, and you have a great day.